In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using blend modes in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. What blend modes allow you to do is take one layer and have it interact with the layer that's underneath it. So in order to use the blend modes, you're going to need a couple of layers. So I've got my photograph here. I'm going to go into my backgrounds and I'm just going to drop a background onto my blank page. Next, I want to take the photograph and I want to blend it into the background. So to do that, I need to click on my photograph to select it and then make sure that you're in your color tab because once you're in there you're going to notice your blend modes that are underneath your color wheel if you have your color wheel activated. Now underneath your blend modes you're going to notice that you've got normal listed which is your default setting and with any blend mode that you have you can always use the transparency slider to make it lighter or to make it darker. So if you go over here and you click on the arrow pointing down, you're going to release the menu which will show you all of your various blend modes. Some of these blend modes are actually going to work much better than others and that really depends on your photograph and the layers that you're using to interact with it. So let me start with the first one. I'll just click on Erase and you'll see that the image disappears. Over here you can go back and you can click on your next one which would be called Darken. Again, at any time you can use the transparency and you can make it just a little bit lighter or move it right back over here and make it darker. Now while this is highlighted, you actually have three options. Option number one is to go back here and click on each blend mode individually. Option number two is to use the wheel on your mouse and go down or up to get to the next blend modes. And if you don't have a wheel on your mouse, you can always use the arrow keys on your keyboard to advance to the next settings. So let's just go through all of these quickly. So your first option under normal is called erase, then there's darken, multiply, color burn, lighten, screen, color dodge, overlay, soft light, hard light, difference, exclusion, hue, saturation, color, and finally luminosity. So those are your blend modes. I'd like to blend this photograph into the background and create a scrapbook page. I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to select screen. Now when I click off of my image, you're going to see that the ending of the photograph has the edge of its line and that doesn't look so pretty with this background. So if I wanted to blend this, the first thing I would need to do is click on my photograph to select it and then go into my brushes. Now I'd actually like to use pastel number one brush, which is in natural media. And then when I've selected this, I need to go over to my blend modes and I want to select erase. Next, all I need to do is go to the top of the screen and click on my brush. Now the width of my brush is set at one point. So I'm actually going to make this much larger till about 57. And all I'm going to do is just draw on my photograph and you can see wherever I draw, it's going to blend through. Now I'm just going to delete that by clicking on undo. And now all I'm going to do is sort of blend in the lines that are on this photograph into my background. Now that it looks a little bit more like it's more blend into it, I can easily click on the select button to turn off my brush. Now you don't have to just use the pastel brush. You can use any of the brushes that are inside of Digital Scrapbook Artist 2 as long as you've got your background and your photo on top. Now it works a little bit differently with materials. Let me show you how that works. If you go into your materials, and let's just say I place this here, and now if I go into my photographs, if I place my photograph on top, I cannot use the erase mode using the brushes. That's because you can never do it on the exact same layer. So in this case, what you'd have to do is have your material on one layer, and I'll just delete my photograph, and then you go over here and you click on Add Layer. Make sure that this area is selected, so I'm just going to click on it to highlight it. And then you take your photograph and you place it there. So now your photograph is on layer number two and your material is on layer number one. Now, if you go into your brushes and you click on the brush that you want to use, set that to erase and then click on your brush. Over here, I'm just going to make this much bigger. You can now go through this and your material underneath will show through. So just bear that in mind. If you're using a background, you don't have to switch the layers because the background is already on its own layer. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to delete it. I'll go into layer number one. I'll click on the material and I will delete that as well. 
All right, so now let's go back over here. We'll get rid of layer number two because I no longer need it. And now what I want to do is create a scrapbook page. So to do that, I'm going to go into my embellishments. And the first thing I want to do is take this ribbon and just place it right over here. Now I want to apply a blend mode to my ribbon, so I'm just going to go over here and change it to luminosity, and over here I'll go into my photo and I'll place this on my page, make it a little bit bigger, go to outline, send outline to the front, and I'm going to color that white, go into line, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger to give it the illusion that this is a photograph with a white edge. Now I can just rotate that a little bit and there is my scrapbook page. All I need to do is maybe add a little bit of journaling and it's completed. Now let me show you another thing that you can do with your blend modes. I'm just going to a different page and I'm going to go into my materials. I'll place this material onto my page and I want to actually make this 12 by 12. So all I'm going to do is go over here to transform. And while this is selected, I'm going to change the width to 12. I'll press enter on my keyboard and I'll change the height to 12 and press enter as well. I'm just going to place this over here. Next thing I want to do is take this sheet, which is already 12 by 12, and place it on top. I want to go back into my blend modes and what I'd like to do is stop when I get to hue. Now you're going to see that there's two different colors now. Hue is the beige color of the original, so we're just going to place this back. And the next thing I want to do is I want to go into my backgrounds and I want to place this background over here. Now you can't see it because it's gone to the back, but if I open up layer number one and if I open up my background, it's going to show me my bitmap underneath. All I need to do is click on the bitmap to release it and I'm just going to drag it above back into layer number one so it's now on top. I'll click on it to select it and now all I'm going to do is apply a blend to it. So I'll start with normal and I'll work my way down the list. When I get to color burn, I'm actually going to leave it there. Next thing I want to do is I just want to click on the color blue to give it a completely different look. Now that I have this selected, I actually want to turn this into a real background. So to do that, I've got three different layers underneath. I'm going to go to the top of the screen. I'm going to click on edit and then select all. So now all three of my layers are selected. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I have 12 by 12 in both of these areas. Once that's done, I want to make sure that I go into a line. I'm going to center it once and then center it once to the bottom. Now that they're perfectly aligned, I'm going to go to the top of the screen and click on tools and then convert to bitmap. Leave everything the way that it is and just click on OK may take a little bit of time to convert depending on your computer, but you'll know it's converted because if you're in your layers, instead of having three layers, you now only have one. With this one layer, I can easily drag it into my backgrounds, and I can also easily go into my materials and drag myself a copy there as well. Now I'm just going to delete this, and I'm just going to test out my brand new background. So I'm going to place it onto my page, and there's my nice background that I've just created. And if you want to give it a little bit more texture, I'm just going to go back and to my materials and I'm going to place this material on top. I'll stretch it out a little bit and while it is selected I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go through some of the list. When I get to overlay it gives it a much nicer illusion. So let me just zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to click on select to turn that off. Let's just move this out of the way so you can see the difference. So over here is what your background looks like without any kind of texture. And over here is what it looks like using this material and using overlay. So you can get some really nice effects. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.